everybody. How are we doing? Every time I go to a funeral, it always reminds me of how many dreams that we have that are unfulfilled, all the <laughs> promises that are unkept. And I felt this way when we buried my Aunt Doll in March of 2015. Now, my Aunt Doll was this lady. She was timeless and, like, ageless. Like, from the day I gained object permanence to the day she died, I swear she looked the same. So I used to tell my mom, I'm like, is she a vampire? Uh, but she was kind of like this matriarchal figure in our, in our family. She would throw these huge, elaborate parties and kind of just sit very calm in the center of it all and just drink beer from a very tall glass. And I have to tell you, we're a very typical Delco Irish Catholic family. Please don't applaud, don't. <laughs> Meaning that so there's a lot, you know, there's some stars, but most of us have starred in the police blotter in the newspaper. So we had a very typical Irish Catholic uh, funeral mass for her, which was, goes on forever, and it's really impolite to duck out after you get communion, because you're not supposed to leave before the body. So after we buried her, we were invited to a luncheon put together by her insanely successful son, Larry. Now, Larry is rich, sort of famous, and well-connected. Basically, he's like the crown jewel and the Burger King uh, crown of our family. <laughs> now, Larry was Donald Trump's right-hand man for 12 years. Uh, newsflash, Trump's an asshole. Uh, I've met him. So we go to this funeral luncheon, and we walk in, and, it, you know, there's just tables and chairs. And then I look to the left, and I see a dance floor and a DJ setting up. And there's like a bunch of Phillies, like accoutrement around. And I'm like, oh shit, we walked into a bar mitzvah, you know? <laughs> but then my cousin Steve, who has a shaved head and the yingling barcode tattooed on his neck, waved me over and I was like, oh, we're in the right place. <laughs> so I go over and the, it's my whole family's at the bar, which is not a surprise because like 10 minutes after my mom died, they literally rolled a keg right through my front door. So we begin to drink like Vikings. Shots, beer, shots, beer, there's music playing. And I don't know if you guys know how weird it is to be at a funeral luncheon when there's a DJ, especially when he's playing Get Low by Little John. <laughs> so I'm hammered, and I, I decide, okay, I've got to go to the bathroom. I walk into the bathroom. Some of my cousins are doing coke. And I'm like, wow, this is interesting. And I get real pee shy, and they didn't stop talking. And they're like, do you know who's coming to this funeral? And I'm like, that's not something anyone ever says. <laughs> who's coming to this funeral? So I, I exit the bathroom quickly and I go to walk outside and I'm passing relatives. Everyone is happy and in a good mood. I go outside, I open the door because when I drink, I like to smoke, sorry. So I go outside, the door opens and I am immediately hit with a plume of marijuana smoke because 12 of my cousins are passing a joint. And I'm thinking, this is not a funeral luncheon, this is a Metallica tailgate. So I make my way back inside, I'm drunk, I go back to the bar. I go over there, my uncle's there, he hands me a shot of Crown Royal, and we're all doing shots and we're saying, let's give it up for Dolly. So we're like, let's give it up for Dolly. And then from behind, a voice came over a microphone, hey, let's hear it for Dolly. And I turn around, and it's none other than the Geeter with the heater, the boss with the hot sauce, Jerry Blavitt. <laughs> and if this funeral luncheon was like an electric like the EDM song, Jerry Blavitt was like the bass drop because all hell broke loose. Elderly people were forsaking walkers, parents throwing children. It was insane, insane. And then I'm, apparently, I just found out the other day, I turned to my cousin in my drunken stupor and said, I'm going to make out with Jerry Blavitt. <laughs> so I'm trying to like push through a phalanx of like gray hairs and ARP subscribers. And I can't do it. I can't get through, you know? So I turn to her son, and I go, Larry, and this is exactly what I said to him. What the fuck? And he looked at me, he goes, my mom loved Jerry Blavitt, and she said to me before she died that when she died, she wanted to have a party for her funeral. And I looked around, and all my relatives, they were happy, and they were smiling. And I was like, man, that's right. And then I blacked out. <laughs> I woke up the next morning, like Biggie Smalls, was it all a dream? Went through my phone and noticed there were 70 pictures of me trying to sexually accost Jerry Blavitt at my aunt's funeral luncheon. So now when anybody ever asks me what the best day of my life is, I always tell them, the day we buried my aunt. Thanks, guys.